Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam rasulullah wa ba'd. In the name of Allah, I may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger as what follows. Family, friends, foes, homies and haters, welcome back to another episode of The Features. I receive you all with just love and serenity and no hatred in my heart. And I greet you with peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon all of you. Now before I begin... Before I continue, <laughs> please like, share, subscribe. Please hit me up on Patreon. And let's get into it. As I close out this series about uh, the brother Wajdi al Akari, this particular last leg is going to be a lesson mostly to the youth but for everybody really and the lesson here is to demonstrate to you the power of silence the power of remaining quiet and just listening and taking information in as opposed to putting yourself into the conversation. As you know, as we backtrack, the first video I did, I outlined how Wajdi used Orientalist tactics throughout his entire video to refute uh, Sheikh Abu Toba without any manners whatsoever. And I asked a simple question, just one simple question to illustrate this point. Where did he get the context of Abu Toba saying that if you haven't made, memorized the Quran, you can't make Dawah? That was it. And all I asked for was a timestamp. That was the first video. The second video, I outlined how not only did he use Orientalist tactics, but how he even made up and lied, making up Islamic principles in order to de uh, denigrate another Muslim. And my third video, I talked about the new hypocrisy that has infected uh, the Dawah, the new hypocrisy, and that is the hypocrisy of the Jarhu Ta'adil culture and how the people leading the charge on this they hold everybody to a certain standard while they themselves don't keep that standard for themselves and all the Muslims look at that and they see lies, deception, um, double standards, triple standards, quadruple standards. And I outlined this. In this video, you're going to learn how powerful not leaving a comment is, not um, putting your two cents into the conversation is, not um, what you might call it, uh, you know, being the, not being the first to give your opinion. You're going to learn that today. And before I continue, I want to apologize. To all the brothers, I'm going to mention, because I'm going to drop a lot of names, give a lot of examples, 
and I'm gonna get very personal my person on on my side I'm gonna talk about you know I'm not gonna talk about anybody on a personal level I'm gonna talk about myself okay on a personal level I've never done this before I don't I don't think so anyway on on this channel but it's so that you can learn this lesson and and you can learn it from the way that I approach things and why I take the positions I do and you're gonna see it firsthand without any dust whatsoever you're going to see it and it's probably the first and the last time I do anything like this so that you can take this lesson now I don't believe for a second that the brother was the he didn't know what he was doing I believe he did that hit job on Sheikh Abu Toba intentionally I believe that he was malicious but he said he's not malicious so I have to take that back okay he said I'm getting into his intention so I said he's a very sincere liar and I believe he did that with purpose so as we close this out uh, the brother Wajdi he had a question so let's hear his question Abu Tauba then goes into a really weird, weird um, uh, direction and says that a lot of immigrants come to the West and they know the society and they think they know the society and they don't know nothing. So basically he's saying now about people like Omar Sulaiman, obviously, uh, or maybe other du'at, they're given a platform, but they're, uh, they're immigrants. I checked uh, Omar Sulaiman on, on Wikipedia. It says that he was born uh, in America uh, to Palestinian parents. So uh, that makes him an American, but not, I guess, if you're not native, 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 like you're, you know, third, fourth generation, I guess, to Abu Tawbah, you don't count as an American. Allahu Alam. He goes on to say that, you know, these people, they don't know how deep the kufr is and the hate. So again, when we tell them, shut up, sit down, and let us take the lead. They say, we ain't listening to you. Mm -mm. I'm not going to say the word, the N-word. He says, they, that's what they say with their action. Wow, like what's going on here? What kind of intention is it? Where are you going with this, Ya Abu Tawbah? Now this became an issue of race and an issue of immigrants not being able to speak about American matters because they're not real Americans because they really don't know. Like, isn't it, isn't it knowledge of Islam that dictates your ability to maneuver? Did you catch the question, family? Did you catch it? Wajdi Akari wanted to know if this was an issue about race. So I'm going to answer his question with another question. And that is, what was the reason Omar Suleiman was at the border to begin with? I'm going to repeat it again because I know not a lot of you just didn't catch it. So I'm going to repeat the question. I'm asking, what was the reason that Omar Suleiman went to the border to begin with? Wasn't Omar Suleiman at the border protesting? for the rights of Latinos? Isn't that what he went to the border for, Wajdi? So if you're asking if it's an issue about race, yes, yes, it's an issue about race, bruh. He didn't go there to get involved with uh, Shirk, you know? He wasn't going there for that. He wasn't going there you know, just to simply hold hands with some LGBTQ. He was going there to protest the border wall, which is directly linked to the immigration of the Latino people from the Latin world. That's what he was going there for. Was it about race? 
So here comes Omar Suleiman. He's trying to represent the Muslims in this protest. And here's Abu Tawba saying, these immigrants, they don't know what's going on. Abu Tawba couldn't have spoken truer words. Because of the struggle of black people, you enjoy the rights as foreigners in the West because of our struggles. You didn't come here struggling for civil rights. You came here, you got the civil rights because of the struggle of black people. Omar Suleiman was in the struggle for civil rights. And then he goes on with even more of this, you know, like I said, I said he was pompous and he came with this pompous stuff. You know, isn't it Islam that dictates whether or not you're going to be right or wrong? You see what I'm saying? And he knows what he's doing, but the youth, they don't understand. You know, whatever happened to the people of Mecca know its mountains best. This is the bab that Abu Toba was coming from, bro. We know our mountains best. We know this place best. We know what happens here best. Surprise. So yes, yes, the foundational blacks know what's going on here better than you. The foundational Latinos know what's going on here better than you. The foundational uh, Native Americans know what's going on here better than you. We know our mountains best. It doesn't matter that Omar Suleiman has, was born to Palestinian parents. He was born after the struggle. He benefited from our struggle. So if he wants to fight for our struggle, he needs to listen to the voices of us so we can advise him. Yes, it is about race. It was always about race. He went there because of race. Umar Suleiman was protesting because of race. Mm -mm -mm. But look, <laughs> remember I told you I want this to be a lesson in silence. And so you can see and know the power, how powerful just being quiet and taking information in is. Now I want to go back to my first video for one second. According to him, anybody, uh, these are his words. If he feels otherwise, please next time use different words so that I don't have to criticize and then you have to reply and we go back and forth playing ping pong from the beginning articulate and choose your words I don't look at please if you understand English differently then don't tell me this is American slang African American slang this is clear language anyone who speaks English understands and so our lesson in silence begins classes in session now this statement that he made not only is it a racist trope, but it's one of the oldest racist tropes and very popular racist tropes that somebody can actually say. You see, in the times of slavery, it was illegal for black people to read and it was illegal for them to speak their own language. And so, during the time of reconstruction when black people were educating themselves this is when they started you know a lot of the the former states started beginning to learn to read and whatnot 
until the white supremacists destroyed all of that. So in their literature, the white supremacists wrote that the black race or the Negro race or Negro race is an inferior race with an inferior intellect. And this was the reason why they don't speak well, they're lazy. This is from Darwinism, theory of evolution, uh, you name it. They put it in, in, in the science textbooks. When we were growing up in, in school, they would give us literature, racist literature. I remember reading Huckleberry Finn. I remember reading Gone with the Wind and having to watch it. And how in every single movie where there was a black person in the past, they could not speak well. And they could not speak good English. And he used the very same language that these racists used to describe us in our speech. The same. Now for a Muslim, for us anyways, we can forgive the brother because we can say, okay, maybe he doesn't know. But I put that particular part in there on purpose because I was suspecting something else because of the way that Wajdi Akri refuted Abu Toba without any respect, talked about him like a boy, like a child, even though Abu Toba is a decade his senior. So I put that in there with purpose in mind and I didn't say anything. Remember, that's my first video. I didn't talk about race. I didn't mention anything about race until now. And we were going to go and look at the comments for one second. So I figured that some of the people in the comments would come through. And of course they did, <laughs> okay? Sajid, he left, Sajid Lippin, that is, Brother Sajid Lippin. Like I said, you gotta forgive me first because I'm gonna be dropping names, but it's all right there for the world to see. He put the comment right there for everybody to see, okay? So I'm not talking no private conversation. I'm not even refuting his comment, right? But he said it, so he's gotta stand on it. So one of my, um, uh, I guess my watchers or whatever, subscribers, you can say, uh, she caught on to it, right? And she writes to Sajid, I'm surprised that Sajid and surprised that he doesn't get why this video is necessary, calling it a waste of time. I'm about to get a, be a bit disrespectful, although I don't mean to be, but it, it is what it is. Bro, Sajid, you are privileged to the point you can't get it. You, you just can't, you just can't get. You cannot relate to the black Muslims in America. You come on the scene and you get a following based on the color of your skin, accepting by foreign Muslims as you are their token. Their token American, your, their ticket to the American dream. Granted, you did graduate and as have many others, but bro Sajid, you, bro Sajid needs to shut up, okay? It's a bit harsh, <laughs> okay? It's on the harsh side, but you can read it in the comments section. But again, she is clearly reacting, right, to the uh, racist racism in the, that she found in the video, right? That's why I put that there, right? And then Sajid left a comment, and he couldn't see it. She called him out for it. And what did Sajid say? What did Brother Sajid say? He said, "Thanks for confirming what is really what this is really all about for some people." Did you catch that? Did you catch that black family? What Sajid Lippim is trying to tell you is that the only reason that the features is doing this video to begin with is because Abu Toba is black. Did you catch that? What? Thanks for confirming, meaning they already talked about this. They've been talking about this. And if they've been talking about this, 
then what they are saying is that they do not want to see black unity. How long have I been doing these videos for? I've been making these videos from before George Floyd. I've been telling you what time it is very clearly. Now, Sajid, he's our brother. But he, without even knowing, said the thing that I was actually warning the black converts about. Yes, they don't want to see us united. When did I ever mention race? But this point right here, really, this isn't what set me off. Because I could I could let that go. I think most of us can let that go. Most of the black converts anyway. Because we deal with this since we became Muslim. We deal with the racism. And we understand that most of our brothers and sisters, they just really don't know. They don't know. They don't know that they're being racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? They really don't get it. But this isn't what set me off. It was what Wajdi Akari said. He said, racist people calling innocent non-racist people racist. Mm -mm -mm. He made one of the most oldest racist tropes. And I put it in the video. He doesn't even know that he said a old racist trope. And if you don't believe me, Wajdi, ask any one of those black, uh, foundational black uh, do act that you're close to. Ask them if it was a racist trope. Ask them. Just ask them. I'm not making it up. I was getting phone calls. I was getting text messages on my phone. Did you see what that Wajdi said? Did you see what that Wajdi said? And you know what I said? I said, just leave it. Just leave it. Like I always do. I always say, just leave it. But that's not all. Before I continue, I don't have to answer to nobody. Okay? I refuted Abu Hakim Bilal Davis, black. I refuted Anwar Wright, black. I refuted those butter biscuits from Celebi Inc., black. These people don't want to see black unity. I want to see black unity. I'm an open black nationalist. I'm an open Muslim. I'm open Salafi. And I say that the idea that black people can live in white supremacist Western society and think that they can be free is absolutely ridiculous. And we need to separate and form our own nation. That's my belief. That's the Islamic belief. Islam says that. When the Prophet Sallallahu was being oppressed by the Quraysh, did he say, let's integrate? Did he say, let's get together? Did he say, let's live together in this society? Under your rule, he made hijrah. He made hijrah. And they don't like what I'm saying. That's why they attack my channel. That's why they send people to troll my videos and dislike them. Because I tell you the truth. I don't apologize for it. I'm not sorry for being black. How many teachers from Medina University did Wajdi ever say anything bad to or bad about how many you know how many one Sheikh Tahir Wyatt is that a coincidence and as far as your your mayor is concerned I see you should say their mayor a man named Yorty 
who has been slandering the Muslims, a professional liar, a professional liar. who has mastered the art of using half-truths, put it in the paper that they broke into our religious uh, place of worship and got records that they can use to prove that most of us have criminal records. You can't be a Negro in America and not have a criminal record. Martin Luther King has been to jail. Queen. James Farmer has been to jail. Why, you can't name a black man in this country who is sick and tired of the hell that he's catching who hasn't been to jail. Charged him with being seditious. They put Moses in jail. They put Daniel in jail. Why, you haven't got a man of God in the Bible that wasn't put to jail when they started speaking out against exploitation and oppression. They charged Jesus with sedition. Didn't, didn't they do that? They said he was against Caesar. They said he was discriminating. Because he told his, his disciples, go not the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep. He discriminated. Don't go near the Gentiles. Go to the lost sheep. Go to the oppressed. Go to the downtrodden. Go to the exploited. Go to the people who don't know who they are, who are lost from the knowledge of themselves, and who are strangers in a land that is not theirs. Go to those people. Go to the slaves. Go to the second-class citizens. Go to the ones who are suffering the brunt of Caesar's brutality. And if Jesus were here in America today, he wouldn't be going to the white man. The white man is the oppressor. He would be going to the oppressed. He would be going to the humble. He would be going to the lowly. He would be going to the rejected and the despised. He would be going to the so-called American Negro.